Okay, in IB physics, they want you to know about different types of resistors and different elements in your circuit. One of those that they want you to know is an element called a potentiometer, and we didn't get to cover this very well in class. So I'm going to I'm going to try to briefly go over what a potentiometer is. Okay, a potentiometer, okay, has to do with potential difference. Okay, a meter makes it sound like you can change it, because that's exactly what it is. A potentiometer is a device that you can change the potential difference across something. This right here is the symbol for a potentiometer. In your IB book, it looks like, or in your IB uh, data booklet, it looks something like this, right? Where they just have an arrow coming down. But they actually have something like there's a circuit here, and then the arrow comes down, and it points to a certain part. Now, a potentiometer, again, the purpose of it is to change the electric potential, or potential difference, also known as voltage, right, is the nickname for potential difference is to change the potential difference across an element. In this circuit, you're trying to change the potential difference or voltage across the light bulb. Now, in our circuit, our total battery has a voltage of 12 volts. Okay, this right here, this arrow, is a slider. And if I can, I can slide this over here, right, so it can look and slide farther over, over here, or I can slide it over here, and I can slide it anywhere along this resistor. And depending on where I slide it, it will change the potential difference across this. Now again, since the battery has a potential difference of 12 volts, okay, that means from one side to the other side, it should drop 12 volts. So if we, let's say the electric potential at the beginning is 12 volts, and so therefore it should drop over to zero by the time it gets over here. So if it starts off at 12 volts, okay, all on this side is all 12 volts. Potential is all 12 volts on this side. By the time it get, drops over here, it should drop down to zero. So everything that's purple is zero volts, right? And it should drop that much. Well, how much it drops across the light bulb depends on where it's hooked. So what we're gonna do is, this is, this is actually a good example of a potentiometer would be if you had something like a wire with a high resistance like a nichrome wire, where you know, depending on how long the wire is, you have more resistance, okay? In fact, in, in IB, there's the equation resistance due to on a wire is equal to the resistivity of the wire times the length divided by the uh, cross-sectional area of the wire, right? So nichrome wire is one of those wires that has quite a bit of resistance. Usually we ignore the resistance of the wire, okay? So if you imagine this as a resistor and where you attach this wire here along this resistor or this nichrome wire, where you attach it depends on how the current's gonna flow. Either the current will flow up here around and then connect here, right, and flow total current through this part. Or if you connect it over here, right, it'll come around, it'll split, and then, sorry, if the connector was over here, it'll split and then it'll combine at this part. So some parts of your potentiometer or this little resistor here, some parts will have only some of the current going through while the other part has all of the current going through because it will combine and continue. Okay? So let me show you how we're going to imagine a potentiometer. Whenever we see a potentiometer like this, we actually imagine it as, or it's easiest to imagine as, where the wire comes, you're splitting it into two different resistors. Okay? So there's one over on this side and there's one on this side. Now, if your connection goes all the way and connects over here, right, then that would be like there is no resistor here and all the resistance is on this side. Okay? If your wire goes and connects all the way on this side, that would be as if this resistor doesn't exist and all the resistance is on the inside right here. Okay, and this is just a wire. So where you place this slider will depend on how big this resistor and how big this resistor will be. So they will, should give you enough information to figure out the resistance of these two, and then you can figure out the voltage. Now let's just talk in general though how it works. So if I, for example, attach my, my lead or my connection all the way on this side, what kind of voltage would I get? Would I get a large voltage across this or a small voltage? Okay, let's take a look. So again, we said over on this side, we're saying is all uh, zero volts, right? It should drop from 12 on this side to zero. So over here we're saying it's all 12 volts. 
Okay? So if I take my connector and I connect it all the way on this side, so I take my connector and I connect it all the way over here so that this is just one big resistor in the middle, and I connect it right here, that means this wire is now connected to the zero volt side. This is all zero, right? And so volts, and this is still is 12 over here. So that means the potential difference is 12 volts across your light bulb, right? It's a parallel to this and parallel, well, not parallel to better, but it's parallel to this. It will have the same voltage across both, right? That's the rule for voltage and or, uh, potential difference and um, parallel circuits. So this drop will now be 12 volts. That's the most you're ever gonna get across the light bulb because that's the total voltage in your battery. If you took this wire and moved the connection, okay, so back to our original diagram where it was connected in the center, right? Okay. If we took this, this slider, and we took it and we slid it over here all the way to this side, what kind of voltage are you going to get? Let's take a look. So we slid it all the way over to here. And now the, this is just one resistor. We've got to get rid of that one or whatever. It's just one, one resistor over on this side. This wire is no longer connected to the... Sorry. This wire over here is no longer connected to the zero volt side. It's actually still con it's connected to the 12 volt side, just like this one. So this is 12 volts electric potential. This is 12 volts electric potential. The drop across it is zero. There is no potential difference. So what would that mean? If you have a potential difference of zero across the light bulb, it won't even turn on. It won't light because there's no voltage across it. So a potentiometer, you can vary the voltage or potential difference across an element like a light bulb from zero by sliding it, looking at back at the original diagram, by sliding it all the way to this side of it, you make the potential difference zero. Or you can get the maximum potential uh, electric potential or potential difference by sliding it all the way to this side. Right? But the maximum you can ever get is the total in your battery. And anywhere in between you'll just have something in between. That's the general concept of how a potentiometer works. Now, how do you actually solve problems with it? To be honest, I haven't seen too many IB problems where you actually end up solving problems. There are more conceptual problems with a potentiometer, so I'm gonna leave it at that for now. But uh, if there ever is one where there's a math problem and you have to solve it, you, all you're gonna do is you're just gonna treat it as, you just have to redraw your diagram and treat it as two separate resistors, just like this, and then solve, they will give you enough information to figure out what this resistor is, and how much this part of the resistor is, and how much resistance this part is, right, and the total should add up to the total resistance of the entire potentiometer. And they'll give you enough information, and then you can just solve it just like any other circuit, uh, circuit problem, right, where if this was just a, a 